Hey folks, David Stewart here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day and a great new year. New year, new you. Great opportunity to talk about creative habits as requested on the Discord server. Of course, I am the author of Keys to Prolific Creativity, among many other books and albums and YouTube videos and articles. Um, so you can pick that up on Amazon for $2.99. All of this is information that's, I guess, tangentially related to this, though I don't talk about the new year specifically. But the new year is actually a great time to establish new habits for creativity and to unlock your creativity in new and important ways. And there's a lot of reasons for that. First of all, there's a lot of energy with the new year. People are excited to make changes. They make New Year's resolutions. It's why it's so hard to even find a treadmill at the gym in January. It used to really annoy me. I was like, I gotta skip the I would skip the gym in January and just like run in the neighborhood because it was just too hard to like find a bench to lift weights on even um, at the gym on, in January. And then everyone would fall off from their habits about three or four weeks in. Then you can go back to the gym. Uh, but that's indicative of the fact that people have trouble establishing new habits. But January, despite that, is actually a great month for establishing new habits, not just because of New Year's resolutions, but because for adults who are working, there's no holidays in January. It is four solid weeks of working, uh, five days a week, two days for the weekend until you get somewhere into February. Maybe you have a President's Day weekend where maybe you can get away or party or do something else. That's actually really good. That means that you've got your schedule, your habits, your routines going nonstop for four weeks. So if you want to add a new routine into that mix, January is an excellent time to do it because you can work on having and maintaining that routine for four weeks. After you get it done for four weeks, it's going to be a lot easier to reestablish it after you take a break, like go on a trip. Um, and it's going to be a lot easier. It could be a lot harder to give up on that routine uh, in any given day, once you've established the routine and you start to see the results of the routine, that's really important. Uh, when you are working creatively, let's say you're writing a book, four weeks of solid work will get you pretty deep into a manuscript where you are seeing the fruits of your labor come to life. And that is going to re-energize you to continue to do the writing process. This is even more potent, I think, if you are a university student. University students, you have one schedule of classes in the fall, finals end, you have a big break. All of your habits, all of your schedule are gone from the fall semester. And then you get a new spring semester schedule, new teachers, new classes at different times. Great opportunity to rethink your a creative process and rethink your schedule. I had to do this every single semester when I was a music student because every semester it was a different schedule and there were different holes in the schedule. You know, I'd have, uh, you know, music theory from nine to 10 and then I have a break and then I have another, you know, I'd have arranging at 11 or something. So what do I do in that break? Oh, I'm going to practice from uh, 10 to 11. And I figured out through a lot of that. First of all, I did it very poorly when I started as a student because I didn't know um, you know, what I was doing. And of course, I was coming from the Gen Y experience where, uh, like, there's very little of your day that happens to be scheduled. Like, everything's extremely scheduled at school, and then you're just kind of turned loose um, and no one's watching. Like, the adults are all missing. <laughs> from, that was what it was like in the 80s and 90s, guys. Um, so I had to learn how to work for myself and have my own routines uh, as, a, as a young college student. And writing was one of those. I actually took up writing as a freshman and was doing it every night um, until I figured out I sucked at it. And then I lost heart for a while before coming back to it. But anyway, as a music student, I had to figure that out. What instrument am I going to practice when? Because I was playing like in the wind ensemble and, uh, you know, I had marching band in the fall and then uh, maybe had guitar ensemble or choir. I had all of these ensembles at different times in different years that I had to uh, take part in while still working on my composition degree and things like that. So it was always a challenge to figure out where that stuff was going to go. And I learned sort of where I work best. I did a whole semester of waking up at 5 a.m. to practice in the morning. And I figured out, I'm, it's not that I'm not a morning person, but like really boring practice works good in the morning <laughs> and really intensive. I'm thinking about it and feeling works better in when you're more awake in the afternoon and the evening when you're a little bit more of yourself. So if you're just doing like hammer-ons and pull-offs and like technical exercises, yeah, morning's a great time to do it. But um, you're going to find it really hard to do that in the afternoon. So I figured out like when 
you know, when the times were to do it. So my advice for a working adult, and I guess for a university student as well, is know yourself, first of all. If you're a person that wakes up really easily, put your work before work. It comes first. So if you normally wake up at seven to go to work at eight, wake up at six. Just set that, set it back an hour, your alarm clock, wake up at six, get your coffee, write some words. Doesn't matter since you're just focusing on an hour right now, you're not focusing on word count. Just write as much as you can. Just do as good as you can. Um, if you're practicing guitar, just practice during that time and then go to work and do all of your work. Come home. And this is doubly if you're the kind of person who wakes up easy and you're just, if you're mentally exhausted after your work and you need to go collapse into a chair and watch Netflix for an hour, uh, just do your work before work. That way it's always there. It's really hard to skip it. If you are like me, I was a public school teacher and I had a really intensive schedule. I used to work during my lunch break. Not everyone can do that because and in fact, I didn't always do it because people would want to go to lunch. So if you're thinking, oh, I'll just work in my lunch break, that's a great place to put extra work, but not the best place to put your consistent work. So pick a time that is going to consistently be your work time. First thing in the morning or maybe right after work or you, maybe you're like me and you work right before bed. Um, sometimes people get energized to work before bed. I'm more mentally and creatively aware. Um late in the day uh, versus early in the day. That's what it's always been for me. So I like to work at night. And if you're, say, working on a word count goal, which would be the other way to do this, like let's say you want to write a thousand words a day, putting it later in the day means that you can't go to sleep till you finish the thousand words. Now that might be, might end up cutting your sleep a little bit short, but it ensures that you get the work done and that you, you, you're forcing yourself to make progress towards your goals. But for most people, I recommend just pick an hour. If you're a person that doesn't wake up easily, but you're energized after work and like normally you're like, I'm going to go hit the gym, maybe write and then hit the gym, go home, write something, then go to the gym. So put that in between the things that you normally are energized to do, but put it before wherever like your energy runs out. So if you're the person that eats dinner, and goes to sleep. <laughs> Don't put it after dinner because you're going to get there and be like, um, we're going to put some words in, right? Know yourself. Pick, an, pick a time that you think you're going to be alert and peaked to work and work every single day. If you do it for a whole month, it's going to be a lot harder to get rid of it later on. If you're a student, you might need to do more of what I call working in the margins. Working in the margins is, I talk about it a little bit in this book, but I've talked about it more on the channel and with articles. It's finding ways to fit work into small gaps. Maybe you have a, a one hour gap between classes. How can you be more creative in that one hour? Well, you could be studying during that one hour or you could be writing, right? Like get your laptop out or you can even get a phone and a Bluetooth keyboard and just work on your phone. I know I've known several authors who wrote like half their book on their phone because they have, they'd have like a 20 minute break at work and they'd whip out their phone and just write in some ideas, write some words down and maybe just clean it up later at the computer. And that's great. You could do it with a Google Doc. Um, I wrote quite a bit of at least one of my books on Google Documents because I could work on my phone, then I could work at, at, uh, at work on a computer, uh, then I could uh, you know work at home on a computer. Like it was always, the document was in the cloud. So no matter what, where I was, I had, the access to do it. Um, same thing with like bring, you know, carry your guitar around, carry your guitar with you. You've got 30 minutes, pop out the guitar, find something that you can do for those 30 minutes. That was going to make you uh, just a little bit better. And um, boy, it'll have a big effect over time. Get a headphone amp and plug that into your guitar and just practice with headphones wherever you happen to have a break. Um, so working in the margins, that's really the, like the other I guess, option for what you want to do. But the main thing is I say pick a time and stick to it. Now, here's the thing about unleashing your creativity. The truth is creativity is not a magical force coming from the ether, like penetrating you and then music comes out, or book comes out. Sometimes inspiration can feel that way, but the truth is writing is a craft. And like anything else, it requires effort. It requires practice and it requires a routine if you want to get projects finished. And if you are good at your routine, if you create a routine for working on your book, let's say, you'll find that that routine allows you to be more creative. 
It's almost like magic. Because you get into the space, because you're practicing getting into a space where you can write. If every day you get your coffee, you sit at your, down at your computer, you write. Okay, That routine of getting your coffee and doing that every day, your mind will eventually learn to switch into that mode where it's writing and you'll start writing more and more and more and more words and feeling more and more creative each time you sit down to do it. That's the same thing with playing guitar. The first day you may not feel super creative because you haven't... You haven't established a routine where you get into the flow of what you're doing and you have an idea of what, how to direct your energy and your practice. But give it a couple days and before long, you'll figure out that you're more creative as a result of having the routine. Not, um, not The routine is not working against your creativity. Uh, a lot of people have this flawed idea that creativity is just like, it's like a muse and it just hits you and Maybe sometimes it's like that, but I think for most people who are successful and especially people who are prolific and who do a lot of stuff, it's more about the routine. It's more about having time that's open for creativity by making time to be creative. Like you can't have the time to be creative unless you make the time to be creative. So even if you have a session where you sit down and you feel completely uncreative, at least maybe you got some words on the page and that will contribute towards completing your project, right? Finishing your book, finishing your album, whatever it's going to be, okay? So even if there's a day, there's days where you don't feel creative, where things feel wasted, having that routine will allow you to very quickly start to enter your creative space and your creative mode of your mind so that you can work on your project um, a lot more easily. And that kind of goes back around to what I said. You have to know yourself, right? Uh, if I was going to just practice guitar technique, the morning is a great time to do it. And I usually do that. Um, it's something I kind of put into my schedule. Um, at some point last year is I got a headphone amp and I did a little review on the channel of a couple different headphone amps. It sounded good. I left it right there by my guitars and I would just grab a guitar, pop it in, pop my headphones in first thing in the morning practice some licks, some scales, some chords, um, start uh, just experimenting with some patterns and some ideas. And those ideas will kind of percolate through the day. So if, if I have another marginal time, like oh, I'll have another 30 minutes, I'll get my guitar out and practice a little bit. I'll have ideas that I can then come and take into my creative space here and then make a piece out of them and put it on the music channel, right? I'll, I can improvise a 20 minute piece based on ideas that I came up with in the morning or throughout the day. Like you hear something in the morning, you're like, okay, let me, where can I take that? Uh, what, what can I do with that? What, what's a different way to do that? What would sound interesting? And you start experimenting. And then by the time you get to the place where like, I need to be really creative, I have lots of ideas just ready to jump onto the tape. Um, so practicing technique really works good for me in the morning, but uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't normally choose to record in the morning. Right, I would record at night when I'm feeling, you know, more kind of full of of the creative energy rather than, you know, waking up, start ooh some fireworks, uh, start practicing some scales and stuff like that. That's really where I like to put stuff in the morning. But you need to know you. So maybe you're the kind of person that wakes up really easily in the morning and you're like ready to go. In which case, put those scales at night when you're tired. It's like okay, I'm just going to practice my hammer-ons and pull off some of practice my scales or. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do the bit, do the, do the technique work when I'm a little bit more mentally off. So anyway, that's my advice. Pick a time, make it yours, establish it for those four weeks. It's gonna be a lot easier to jump back into it after a three day weekend. It's gonna be a lot harder to not do your daily work and do something else instead. And it's gonna be a lot easier to be flexible with your schedule, believe it or not, um, to where like maybe you wake up later and miss that writing session. You're gonna think about it all day. Okay, I need to get home and I need to, to do that for 30 minutes or whatever it is. And so you're gonna be more inclined to be flexible with it because you've already established it as a habit, as something you do every day, okay? So thanks so much. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Of course, you can support me on... Um, Kofi, I think there's like a little, burp, burp, burp. I put that there. I should put the Patreon one too, um, you know, or patreon.com slash David V. Stewart, and you can get benefits and hop on the um, Discord server through there or just buy the book, $2.99. Everybody who is above a certain level on the on the Patreon and the Kofi gets a free copy of this, um, as well as if you're a channel member, I have it in audiobook format as well. So have a great one, and I will see you all next time.